Hao Ren, is a young man who seems very ordinary and whose life target is to graduate from university, find a job that pays 10,000 a month and marry a cute girl. As much as he lives his life kindly, his decisions sometimes cost him. You might be surprised why he didn't include a house in his life targets. Well, that's because his parents had already left him one. Although he has graduated from college, as he wanted, he still faces the dilemma of getting a job. The first job interview he arrived at seemed like a joke, since he didn't meet the office at the address stated in the ad. Having gone through the stress of the day, he decides to rest a while. Surprisingly, when he opens his eyes, he sees a young girl looking down at him. Seeing her, he immediately assumes she is telling him to leave and apologizes. This seemed funny to her, and she apologized for disturbing him. After that, she asks him for a favor. Apparently, she is lost. So, she asks him if he knows the place marked out in an ad she has seen. Taking a close look at it, How Ren realizes that this place is his house. He asks her why she is looking for it, and she states that she has been searching for it all day in order to rent it. At this point, he realizes that he had put it up for rent a while ago, seeing it as a pure coincidence that she would come to ask the homeowner for directions. He, however, points out the error she made while looking for the house and she feels so devastated. Then, she asks him to lead her there if he knows the place. Although it's far from there, he agrees to take her there and reveals to her that he is the landlord. On the way, she is happy that she met him and introduces herself as Liu Lily. Seeing how free she is, how Ren wonders if she isn't afraid of being kidnapped since he might be lying to her. The naive girl only imagines that he could be talking about being a human trafficker who could eat her up. When he says he isn't one, she believes him immediately, stating that she is only afraid of being conned. When they arrive on the streets of the house, Lily wonders why everywhere is quiet, and how Ren informs her that the security of the place is really good. However, he cautions her not to walk around at night. She doesn't seem bothered about this as she assures him that she is strong. At that moment, the wheels of her box get spoilt and she has a hard time dragging it. Wanting to help, How Ren goes to drag the box but finds it to be very heavy. This makes Lily pick up her box easily and place it on her shoulders. Seeing this, How Ren admits that she was indeed born with great strength. Walking along the windy street, How Ren seemed scared. Lily, on the other hand, is excited. On their way, a wind removes Lily's hoodie and briefly reveals her long animal-like ears. This gets him scared, and since he can't see it again, he assumes he is hallucinating and they go further. Shortly after, they are met by a large number of what Hao Ren thinks are wild birds. Seeing them, Lily senses danger and asks Hao Ren to go ahead since there's something she needs to do. Before sending him off, she takes his smell, but he doesn't want to leave her alone. Instead, he asks what she needs to do, stating that he can't leave her alone. At that moment, they perceive the smell of blood, and Lily realizes that they have come for her. She apologizes to her landlord for getting him involved. After that, she transforms into her true form as a werewolf. This shocks the hell out of Hao Rin. Just then, a vampire attacks Lily and the two do battle. The vampire refers to Lily as a dog before leaving. It seems like it is about to attack Hao Ren when Lily comes to save him. When the vampire disappears, Lily transforms into her human self, seeking to know if Hao Ren is okay. However, seeing how scared he looks, she thinks it's a bad decision to rent his house. Then, she picks up her box to leave, urging him not to tell anyone what he had seen. Worried, how Ren seeks to know where she intends to stay but she starts calling a bunch of inappropriate places. Hearing this, how Ren is more convinced not to leave her alone. Since she just saved his life, he doesn't see an issue with her staying in the house. Even after she tells him that the vampire might come back, he insists that she follows him since he is a good man. When they get to the house, Hao Ren shows her around. Shortly after leading her to her room, she asks if he intends to use her as a lab rat, since that is what people do to aliens. She, however, doesn't wait for an answer and sleeps off. Throughout the night, Hao Ren keeps getting a call but he is too tired to pick up. In the morning, he is woken up by Lily's screams. Getting there, he sees that she is only scared of his cat, Roly. Grabbing it, he tells it to be nice to their new tenant, Lily, especially since her rent would feed his belly. Seeing that the cat is no threat, she changes back to her human form and asks him to turn on the TV for her so she can watch a documentary about her coyote family. Surprisingly, the TV doesn't come on. After hitting it repeatedly, Hao Ren concludes it could be a connection failure. Due to this, he goes to check outside to see. However, just as he opens the window blinds, he sees bats flying outside his window. This only meant the vampire had returned. Immediately, Lily transforms into her werewolf self and is ready to attack. She is, however, not as fast as the vampire who grabs Hao Ren immediately, accusing Lily of kidnapping him in broad daylight. 
she releases Hao Ren and asks him to run while she buys him some time. This was a pretty confusing moment for him, as he didn't seem to know who to believe. The two attack each other and while Hao Ren tries to stop them, they go on. Just then, he informs them that they will have to pay for any damage they incur. At this moment, they stop, and the vampire claims she is only trying to save his life. He angrily states that they could kill him while fighting and claims to be saving his life. Realizing this, they both apologize to him. After that, they go at each other again, but this time, verbally. Lily states that she thinks all of the vampire's kind are evil due to what she has seen on TV. While the vampire accuses her of kidnapping Hao Ren, forcing him to hide her identity and trying to make him integrate her into society. In response to this, Lily states that she lives here. Shockingly, the vampire says she only came here for the house. Hearing this, Hao Ren is shocked. Just as the vampire is about to introduce herself, her stomach makes a sound, signifying that she is hungry. Due to this, Hao Ren cooks a meal for them to eat. He is, however, skeptical as he wonders if she would be able to eat normal food. When she states that she can, he hands her a plate of food. But, he refers to her as a bat. This makes her assure him that she is different from her bloodthirsty servants, the bats, who only act on instinct. She reveals that she is noble in the blood sect and is able to restrain her lust for blood. At that moment, she reveals her name, which happens to be Vivian. After knowing her name, he feels more comfortable. Then, he asks her if she was serious about coming here in order to rent the house. To this, she answers positively, and brings out the same kind of ad Lily had shown him earlier. She tells him that she has no money, and had only ended up choosing to stay in his house since it was the only place she could afford, especially since she doesn't intend to live in deserted cemeteries like she did before. Hearing her story, Hao Ren realizes that the two girls are somewhat identical. However, he is happy because two rent payers are better than one. This makes him agree that she can stay. Hearing this, Lily gets furious. She cannot seem to fathom living with Vivian in the same house. Although Vivian feels the same way, she has no choice due to how broke she currently is. In response, Lily advises her to go to her blood sect gangsters for help. Vivian doesn't want to hear this since she considers herself different from other blood sects. Also, she tries to accuse Lily once again, stating that she isn't used to seeing outcasts make use of humans by cheating and coercing them. She wonders what Lily must have done to make Hao Ren able to trust her, blaming her starvation and wounded body for not being able to fight well. This, Lily sees as merely an excuse. In anger, she smashes the table. Realizing what she has done, she begins to apologize to Hao Ren, promising to pay for the table, but he instructs her to tidy the place up while he goes to show Vivian her new room. When they get there, Vivian remembers she wasn't with her box. Immediately, she jumps out the window to get it but Hao Ren gets bothered that she could be seen and captured on TV. When she returns, she realizes that her purse has been stolen. Hearing this, Lily is happy, especially since this would mean Vivian wouldn't have to stay in the house. On the other hand, Vivian seeks to know if there are any cemeteries nearby where she can sleep. However, Hao Ren has pity for her and lets her stay on the condition that she pays him when she is able to. Since it could take her a long time to pay, Vivian offers to cook. Surprisingly, the food tastes good and Lily even commends her cooking. While they eat, Hao Ren gets a call from an unknown source. When he answers the call, he hears a loud scream. Shortly after, he is informed of an interview he has scheduled for today. This sounded surprising to him since he had no plans to go for any interview today. He is even more surprised to find out that the company is a commerce company. The person, however, instructs him to come by 2 p.m., but he can't come since his place is far from there. While he tries to explain the situation of things, the person hangs up. Eventually, Hao Ren succumbs and takes a bus to the location for the interview. Getting there, he sees a deserted area which he regards as a dump. While trying to find the company, he gets a call once again. This time, the person gives him instructions. She tells him to seek a telephone pole put his hand on the pole and press it down. Then, he is instructed to face the sky, where he is shocked to see a large floating ship. She instructs him to take his hands off while looking at the ship and this causes him to be transported up onto it. When he opens his eyes, he finds himself in front of a huge door. The door opens up, but he is skeptical about going in. Eventually, he does and is led to the office of his recruiter. Seeing her for the first time, he seeks to know who she is. In response to this, she lets him know that he is in an office of space. Although this seemed like jargon to him, he was more concerned about her name, which happened to be Raven12345, his future boss. After introducing herself, she asks him to come closer. This time, she teases him about how pretty his eyes are. 
This gets him surprised. After that, she offers him a seat to begin the interview. While seated, he tries to calm himself down with the fact that he had encountered weirder things in his house. Meanwhile, Raven brings out a cup of noodles to eat and offers Hao Ren some, but he declines. Instead, he seeks to know why he has been invited for the interview. While his area of specialty is commerce, he states that this isn't a commerce company. This time, she reveals that she had only used that as a metaphor. Apparently, the company is an affiliate department of the Sealing Empire tasked with governing all universes. However, their main task is to enhance worldwide cohesion. While all these seem confusing for Hao Ren, Raven states that they can be seen as gods. Upon hearing this, Hao Ren wonders if he is in an immortal heaven. His thoughts, however, are cut short by Raven, who informs him that he has been invited to serve as an assistant examiner. His job would lead him to organize certain issues in the local district, like preventing some races from destroying the world or planning revolutions. Furthermore, she informs him that he has passed the preliminary exam by accepting the two outcasts in his home. Shortly after, she outlines the two things his work entails. First, he has to board some tenants, all of whom are special outcasts. Secondly, it is his duty to mop up when she stops anyone who decides to reverse human evolution artificially. Even after hearing all this, Hao Ren is still confused about what exactly his job is. This time, he plainly asks her. In response, she tells him to just keep his tenants away from trouble. After hearing all this, he threatens to refuse and she lets him know that this will cause his memories of the last two days to be erased, as well as having his current tenants taken away from him. Not wanting Lily and Vivian to go back to the slump they lived in, he reconsiders. He, however, clearly states that he would not do anything immoral, and Raven assures him that he wouldn't need to. He is extra motivated when he hears there's a salary involved. Taking a look at the appointment letter, he realizes that he would basically be getting the same treatment as a government official in his world. With the assurance of monthly wages and guaranteed rents, Hao Ren signed it, accepting to work for them. After that, he is sent back home. When he gets home, Lily and Vivian go head to head while taking a look at the appointment letter. Although Vivian has lived for countless years, she claims to not know anything about an organization like this. Besides, she thinks Raven doesn't sound like a goddess to her, wondering who the hell she is. Amidst all this, Lily spends her time eating and unbothered about the Who situation. On the other hand, Vivian thinks that Raven isn't an ally of the demon hunters since she has asked Hao Ren to treat them well. While he asks her to be more careful about flying around so she won't be traced, she states that the demon hunters are sharp and not as dumb as Lily. This gets the latter angry, demanding that they fight. When Hao Ren intervenes, they stop and she gets back to eating her food. Then, he asks Vivian what the job of the demon hunter is. At this moment, she reveals that they are hybrid monsters with half-human blood, who have been fighting with outcasts for a very long time with none able to defeat the other. While they worked alone before, they somehow, through religious organizations, started working with humans. Seeking to get more information, Hao Ren asks Lily if she knows anything about them, but she states that she has never seen them, except on television. However, Vivian states that if the demon hunters were ever here for her, she would leave by herself and bring Lily with her, so Hao Ren doesn't get involved. To relieve the tension, Lily suggests that they have lunch and watch TV although she seems to have finished all the food in the house. Later that day, while sleeping, Hao Ren finds himself in a different realm. To figure out if he's sleeping, he slaps himself bait T surprisingly feels the pain. At this point, he realizes that he has traveled to a different realm while taking a nap. Reading this, he begs to be taken back since he has just started his job and has two little girls to take care of. I wonder if he realizes how much older Vivian is compared to him. Walking around the cold area, he hears the sound of wolves. Not wanting to die, he runs for his life, but the wolves come after him. He eventually slips and falls, allowing the Alpha to catch up to him. At this moment, he pleads to be spared since one of their lives with him, but the wolf ignores and jumps on him. Fortunately, he is awoken by Lily and manages to escape being a meal. In a shocking turn of events, he realizes that he has wolf fur in his hand. Examining it, Vivian doesn't feel any trace of dark magic. She suggests that Lily smell it since it could be one of her relatives. However, when she does so, she states that it doesn't smell like the wolves she is familiar with. At this moment, the two girls begin a competition for who would provide Hao Ren with the best form of protection, as they both offer him various protective items. Seeing how much stuff Vivian has, Hao Ren seeks to know if she really is a blood sect. She, however, wishes to be regarded as a high-level blood sect. 
he had only asked these questions because most of the items she had provided have the ability to dampen blood sect powers. In response to this, she states that they do not work on her. Instead, they bring her luck and boost her courage. While she praises the items, regarding them as being good, Lily thinks they are just a pile of junk. This gets Vivian angry. She lets Lily know that although she has the items, her powers are still the best gift she has. She tries to demonstrate that by biting herself and trying to draw a sign on Hao Rin's palm. Unfortunately, when she does so, her blood disappears from his palm. This causes Lily to laugh. To make her feel good, Hao Ren says the blood must have evaporated due to the air and his skin, which are both hot. To prove her point, she decides to use another method, which involved a spell and drawing the blood sign in the air. However, just as she begins, she forgets the spell. Shortly after, she asks Hao Ren if he feels sleepy. When he replies negatively, she finds it weird. The spell happened to have worked on Lily, who immediately falls asleep. This makes Vivian wonder why her blood magic doesn't work on him. On the other hand, he wonders the same. At this point, Vivian states that there is only one kind of human who is naturally resistant to magic. In order to get a better explanation, he plans to ask Raven. Just as he picks up the phone to call her, her call comes in. When he picks it up, she screams at him, instructing him to come to the office the next day for an urgent task. After that, she hangs up. Meanwhile, Lily continues to sleep and is undisturbed by them. The next day, Hao Ren arrives at space. He finds himself in front of a big building, which is an equally big water fountain in the form of a statue which he admires. He quickly calls himself to order because it was neither the right time nor place to admire a delicate adornment. Instead, he proceeds into the building, even though he is still wondering why he was called to the place. At the front door, he knocks severely, expecting someone to answer the door, but he is merely greeted by the echoes from his knock. Hao Ren looks around the front, but he finds nobody in the place, which is weird since he got a call to come out. Putting his hands behind his head, he watches the water fountain as he thinks of returning to take a nap. Hao Ren wonders aloud to himself about the people in the building when another person interrupts his thoughts. The person comments that the people he refers to as freaks within the building are not freaks but elemental servants. He whips around immediately to see who the voice belongs to and angrily rebukes the person for causing a scare which is bad for his heart. He calms down when he realizes that it's a familiar person and begins to access her dirty outfit. She tells him that she is just returning from her garden, where she has been pruning trees. He curiously draws closer to the lady to access her one-piece wear and an odd colored hat, plus the big equipment on her shoulder. She moves away in a self-conscious manner from the inspection he seems to be carrying on around her and tells him that the equipment is her warship chopping blade which she has just used to prune the trees. Moving into his front, she wields the massive equipment around, and Hao Ren moves his face away as if it will hit him at any moment. She directs him to enter the room and wait because she has something for him. Hao Ren looks around the room he is waiting in while anticipating what she will likely give him. A while later, she came out dressed in another attire and thanked him for waiting. She walks elegantly to the chairs and sits in one, befitting a royal person. Without wasting time, he asks what she is giving him. After taking time to settle on her seat, she tells him that it is a personal data terminal, a special version for examiners. He immediately became interested in whatever it was she was offering him. She explains that it is high-class equipment which has earned the design award of space, and it is popular among the female staff. She drops it on the table, and Hao Ren picks it up. The device activates instantly, in his hands as he closely observes it. He asks how to use it and she tells him that he should control it with his mind and the device will react automatically. Commonly, the device is useful when faced with a death threat during a mission. She gives him examples of such situations and how Ren becomes awed by the device. The device powers up as he is still holding it. He is amazed at the examples she is giving because, as a pacifist, he cannot fight in the kind of fatal circumstances she is casually describing. Without missing a bit, she tells him that even if he dies, as long as there is work to be done, his spirit can be put into a new body to work without hassle. Laughing at his discomfort, she tells him that he is immortal, which is rare in their history. Her ease does now rub off on Hao Ren, who is not comfortable with her mention of him and death in the same sentence repeatedly. He reminds her to give him the details of his task, and she agrees. But first, she leads him to the Enhancement Center, a room used for enhancement tests for new examiners, so that they will acquire the necessary adjustments to their body for some special abilities. She calls up a heavy-looking chest using one of the computer commanders on the wall and instructs him to get in. 
He complains fearfully about getting into an unknown object and she becomes almost intolerant of his fears. She nudges him into the chest and seals him inside as he cries to be let out. The chest begins to circle widely, and she wonders if she pressed the wrong button. How Ren finds himself in a field, disoriented and unable to think for a bit. Soon, he scrambles to his feet and begins to look around his new environment. The blue web circle from earlier appears to guide him, and it asks to be referred to as the terminal. The terminal gives him instructions that he cannot die in the virtual world he is in, or he will die in reality. Just then, three wolves attack him and he fends them off with his hands, though he is still afraid. The terminal congratulates him for gaining the rigid shield, a blue coat in his hand. The terminal tells him that the rigid shield will automatically appear whenever he is in trouble and needs to get rid of it. The wolves began to howl loudly at the moon, with Hao Ren unable to understand what they were up to. He gets to his feet once more and starts to run for his life. Inside the fields, a bigger wolf, with the ability to talk with humans, catches up with him, and the rigid shield protects him again. Lily is angry that the rigid shield has harmed his teeth and thinks that he will be food for their young ones. He begs to be spared and tries to make a deal with Lily that he will get him to a dentist to cure his teeth if he can be taken to the nearest human settlement. Lily does not buy Hao Ren's story that he is a traveler and comments that humans are dishonest beings who are in the quest to do only what gives them gain. He successfully convinces the big wolf to take him to the human settlement in exchange for a dentist and climbs on his back for the ride. He and the wolf talk on his way to the human settlement and the wolf refuses to trust him regardless of his promises. At their destination, the wolf stays at a safe distance and only Hao Ren approaches the only house in sight. At the door of the house, he looks back at the wolf on the hilltop and shouts to him that he will not forget his end of the bargain. He knocks on the door to the little hut but gets no response. Pushing the door open, Hao Ren uses the terminal to light up his way inside and the device gets upset that he is using it wrongly. He tries to plead with it to light up the place but it refuses, because that will hurt its pride as a device with significant use. Just then, he finds a piece of paper filled with distinct writing and he struggles to unearth it. A sudden change in the air catches his attention and before he can react, a burst of light leaves the piece of paper and struggles to overpower him as it swells around him. The light from the paper connects with the sky, and the ground becomes empty. Meanwhile, around the house, Lily and her pet hit a strong man as they were playing. She apologizes to the man and runs off towards the house with her dog. At home, she gets into a fight with Vivian, who makes a jest of her because of the living space. As that is ongoing, Hao Ren returns to the real world to meet the lady eating. He complains that he only got the rigid shield and she retorts that enhancement should be a progressive process. She explains the idea of the alternate world to him as she sends him to the door. He gives her a souvenir of wolf's hair before going, which she takes with suspicion. She informs him that his mission will be to travel to Europe on business to welcome a new tenant along with the two in his house. Hao Ren tries to protest that they will only cause trouble for him, but she leaves him there. Hao Ren's plane is already airborne, but he quietly has to keep the troublesome tenant in order. One of the two tenants, Lily, demands a look at the menu to see what she will eat later, as she declares that she will eat everything on the menu till she is full. The quiet tenant, Vivian, asks for information concerning the new tenant they are going to meet in Europe. In response to this, Hao Ren tells her that he does not have any idea. But, Raven the lady he met earlier only said that the tenant lives in Yorkford. The noisy tenant, Lily, excitedly tells them that she cannot wait to make contact with the tenant. The quiet tenant, Vivian, scoffs at her, because she knows it will not be easy to meet the new tenant. She looks out of the window of the plane and is fascinated at how high they are flying in the air. Hao Ren asks her if she has never flown high like they are doing and she recounts that the only time she has ever flown a few thousand meters high, she fell off like an ice cake. He worries that if she flies low then people will see her, but she assures him that when flying at high speed, the people are unable to perceive her. The lousy tenant, Lily, tells her that it only means she is unable to afford a plane ticket, but the quiet tenant, Vivian, feels offended and counters that she can fly on her own and does not need a plane ride. They both bicker about this for a while, with both of them refusing to back down for the other. Meanwhile, Hao Ren complains about the long ride they will have to endure in economy class and declares Raven a mean person. Lily breaks off from her argument with her rival to announce that she has been on better plane rides before. Hao Ren asks her in disbelief if she has really been on better plane rides before and if she even knows how to book plane tickets. She gives them exaggerated stories of the plane rides she has taken, especially the special one which she took for free. The three travelers lapse into silence for the remaining part of their plane ride. 
Soon, they arrive at their destination and the three make their way through the cold and foggy weather with their luggage. Vivian observes that the place is now developed unlike before when it was barren land. She tells him that she used to live in England. Lily complains about their long walk because it is about her sleeping time and suggests that they call a taxi, but how Ren reminds her that they are on a tight budget. He looks at the paper in his hand and tells Lily that they must be close to their destination. Vivian helpfully volunteers to ask someone for directions, since her English is as fluent as that of a native speaker. Vivian tries to help them seek directions but nobody understands her, which leaves her angry. He asks her when she last lived in England and it turns out that she lived there a few centuries ago. He becomes disappointed as they wait with their luggage on their sidewalk, because he thought Vivian would be more helpful than Lily. But she was not, since her English is outdated. Vivian immediately rebukes him for comparing them, telling him that they are not the same in any way. Vivian gets an idea that could help them. She walks to the sleepy Lily and gives her the envelope to smell. Lily takes note of the smell and Vivian prompts her to perceive the place to know if there is a similar smell around. Lily provides a direction from which she perceives something similar, but she refuses to move from her spot. How Ren compels her to do so, by telling her that the food at the hotel is good and that gets her moving because she wants a steak. Soon, they can locate their destination. Lily and Vivian get hyped up with the luxury of the place, from the lush fireplace to the comfortable and soft sleeping space. Vivian sinks into the plush mattress with soft pillows while L. Wiley orders a buffet of food in different varieties. This makes How Ren worried as they will be charged on their rent. Lily and Vivian continue to get busy, which annoys him and he shouts for them to maintain order. They both somberly apologize to him for their behavior and the disturbance. How Ren accepts their apology and tells them to concentrate on the task of looking for a new tenant. He calls up the terminal for a map of the place but it reports that the system is not an updated version. Raven pops up on the screen and asks if they have located the tenant but he reports that they have been unable to locate Yorkford. She asks him that researching for a mission is one of the attributes of an examiner, and asks him to call up the map on the terminal. How Ren tells her that the terminal is unable to read the map because it's in a foreign language. Raven asks them to wait while she updates the system, which annoys him because they were stranded. A few moments later, the system confirms the update and reports that all forms of language can now be translated by the terminal. While the system can translate languages, the terminal reports that any negative punishment for Raven will be met by a lightning strike. How Ren is struck by a lightning strike because of his earlier remark about Raven, and as he struggles to regain himself, Lily tries to get the terminal to converse in Wolf's language. After his recovery, they all proceed to the dining room because he is hungry. At the table, Vivian feels irritated by L. Wiley's eating manners, but How Ren tells her it is too late for them to cultivate her eating habits. Just then, Vivian receives a message from her patrolling summons and tells How Ren that they should return to their room because staying there will be dangerous. As they were trying to get Lily to move, a man arrives at their table. Vivian interrogates him, and he introduces himself as Mr. Nangal. He takes a seat at their table, and they ask him for a guide to Yorkford. Vivian tells him that she prefers sightseeing in her place with no residents and visitors, which is why she is interested in going to Yorkford to conceal their real reason for going. Mr. Nangong tells her that Yorkford has been a wasteland for years and it only contains castle ruins with no landmarks. Vivian quietly tells Hao Ren that if their new tenant is an outcast, then he is likely in a place like that. Mr. Nangong cautions them about Yorkford because it is a place with ghosts. Later, Hao Ren tells Vivian that the new tenant may be a troublesome guy. Vivian tells him that her patrolling summons alerted her about the presence of a demon hunter in the hotel. But Lily did not perceive anything, which might mean that she may have not encountered one before. As they continued their conversation, Vivian tells Hao Ren that Mr. Nangong may be the demon hunter and he agrees with her because the man did not look normal. Just then, he appears on the next balcony beside them and confirms that he is indeed a demon hunter and proves it to them. After convincing them, they bring him to their lodge and he asks them if they are normal people. How Ren gets defensive, telling him that he is a normal human, and Lily backs up his story. Mr. Nangong refuses to agree because normal humans do not know Yorkford, but they agree to go with him in the morning. In the hallway, Mr. Nangong acts in a shady manner and hopes that he will be able to keep up with the job he is doing. Vivian and How Ren decide not to trust him, but to watch him carefully. The next day, on the train ride to their destination, they watch an interview concerning the ghosts and the people hunting them. They learn that there is prize money attached to it, which excites Lily and Vivian, and they hope that they will be able to try it. Three ghost hunters enter the train with them, and Vivian immediately detects that they are not normal people. 
she keeps up her suspicion of Mr. Nangong as he continues to give them grand stories of his ghost hunting and techniques. But Vivian thinks that a real ghost hunter will not have so much equipment. At their destination, Hao Ren puts Lily on his back as she complains about food and tiredness. At the inn, the innkeeper informs them that there are no rooms to give them, but they plead with him and he promises to see what he can do to get them a room. After some minutes, the innkeeper comes back to tell them their rooms are ready. Hao Ren collects a key and hands it over to Vivian as the key to her and Lily's room, since they are girls. Whereas, Nangong thinks Hao Ren and Vivian are couples by telling him he wonders why they are not sleeping in the same room. While they were going up the stairs to their room, Lily, who is sleeping and at the same time hallucinating, bites Vivian's neck, thinking it's food, making her scream out in pain. But Hao Ren, who knows how childish they both are, only laughs and bids them good night. Meanwhile, while handing over the key to their room, the innkeeper asks Nangong if they are going to the castle for the ghost event, which Hao Ren quickly answers that they are not, as Namyang introduces himself as a demon hunter to the innkeeper, telling him they are there to eradicate evil spirit in the collapsed castle. After a few chats, the supposed innkeeper introduces himself as Angus, the hotel owner. Having seen him earlier on TV, and knowing he knows some things about the castle, Nangong decides to ask him some few questions surrounding the castle, which he accepts to answer by having them sit in a quiet space with candles on. On the other hand, in the room, Vivian is still struggling from Lily's food hallucination. Just then, she sees one of her bats flying to enter the room from the window. Meanwhile, when they got to the city, Vivian had sent a few bats to go and check the castle, to see the things it beholds before they go there. Back to the men, Nangong asks Angus for the castle map, but surprisingly for them, he confesses that the map doesn't exist but instead he chooses to tell them the history of the castle and the things that happened there a long time ago. He starts by telling them the castle was called Yorkford Castle for centuries ago, which only few people know now, and people were advised to stay away from there. For a rebellion took place in the castle whereby soldiers were trapped in the secret underground tunnel of the castle. He proceeds by telling them, as much as the soldiers became ghosts thereafter and capture treasure hunters for revenge. But there is a treasure hunter who was the first lord of York Fordwa and was fond of collecting rarities. In order to protect his treasure, he rebuilt the underground structure of the castle, whereby he constructed many traps and secret tunnels to make it difficult for anyone to get to the treasure. Even though Hao Ren seems to be uninterested in the continuation of the story, Angus continues by telling them the Lord had three sons, but after he died, the first son inherited all the treasures, which makes the other two sons unite together and start a rebellion. This caused a lot of havoc, as the city was turned into a battlefield and the cross of the church in the castle was recovered in blood. In the end, the three brothers die in the castle, and their ghost attacks people who go to the castle to look for treasures, making the place deserted and forbidden for people to go to. After the secret meeting with Angus, Hao Ren visits the girls to tell them everything they heard from Angus. However, after narrating everything to Vivian, who obviously is the only one listening. Since Lily sleeps deeply, Vivian unleashes her power. She invites her bats and tells Hao Ren she sent a few bats to another castle, and they had perceived the smell of ghosts, which might have a connection with the story he was told. Hao Ren laments the fact that there are ghosts in the castle, but Vivian tells him the ghost in the castle might not have anything to do with the ghost event taking place because the smells of ghosts the bats perceive is from the underground and they can't reach the ground. They become suspicious as it is known that the ghost event took place in the underground, which makes them question what exactly is behind the ghost event, which Vivian thinks might have something to do with the new tenant they are there for. This makes Hao Ren see this as a difficult task with lots of puzzles to be solved. In the men's room, Nangong holds a picture of his sister, but as Hao Ren opens the door to the room, he gets shocked, making the picture slip out of his hand, but fortunately gets captured by Ho Ren, who apologizes for scaring him. While looking at the picture, Nangong snatches it from him, saying the picture is important to him and not everyone gets to touch it. He tells him he snapped the picture but his sister destroys his camera every time he uses it to snap her. Later that night, while about to sleep, Nangong puts himself in a sleeping bag, claiming it is a bag for devil hunters only, which chase away bugs and it also serves as a defense from magic attacks. While Nangong is explaining, Hao sights a mosquito on his face and slaps Nangong in the face with the aim of killing the mosquito, and mocking him for saying the sleeping bag keeps bugs away. After that, Hao Ren asks why the girl in the picture Nangong places on the shelf, which is his sister doesn't work with him as a demon hunter, stating that she would have made a very strong one at that. Nangong, who is still awake, replies to him, 
She tells him that she is not a demon hunter, whereas he became a demon hunter to protect her because his job is dangerous and being with him can threaten her safety. But now he doesn't even know where she is, and immediately he falls asleep. Now, how Ren feels unsafe being with him in the same room due to his last word about how dangerous being with him can be, as he screams out in fear after the hotel light goes off. Later that night, the man and woman they met previously on the train are on a bus with Mr. Angus, whereby Mr. Angus is to take them to the castle after agreeing to pay him a particular amount. Meanwhile, Nangong, who is awake, spies on them with a binocular from his room's window, after which he decides to follow them. Some minutes later, while Hao Ren is still asleep, a wind opens the window, only for Vivian to fly into the room and pounce on his bed, frightening him. At first, he thinks she's a ghost but finds out it's her and asks why she is coming. She reveals to him that Nangong has gone to the castle alone and it's just past midnight. Vivian makes a suggestion, saying they must catch up with them as soon as possible to protect their new tenant from being killed by them or not. To make this work, they go into the room to wake Lily up, only for Hao Ren to find their room in ruins as a result of Lily being hungry and mumbling at anything she sees and, at the same time, sleeps while at it. They try to wake her up, even when Vivian punches her hard, which makes her hit the wall hard with the aim of waking her up, but this doesn't work for long as she falls asleep again. Still on their way to the castle, when Nangju flies on Mr. Angusbus with the other three people from the train. But unfortunately for him, a cobra, which one of the men on the bus carries, crawls to the top where Nangong is, attacking him, which results in him yelling and giving those on the bus the impression that it's a ghost moaning. While this goes on, Hao Ren, alongside Vivian and Lily, tries to catch up with them, while Lily runs on the ground and Vivian gives Hao Ren a lift in the sky. Vivian talks about a shortcut to Yorkford which she finds out from her summoned bats. Then suddenly, Hao Ren sees from above, with some sort of vision power, which is as a result of the body enhancement test Raven did on him, as Lily falls asleep while running, until she hits a rock. They go down to meet her while she cries about how painful it is. Suddenly, the bottom of the rock opens, which makes Lily fall into a tunnel. Fortunately for them, this happened to be a shortcut to Yorkford. They walk through the tunnel until they eventually see light ventilation. They walk toward it, and finally, they are in Yorkford. Getting there, they see exorcists on the other side of the castle, as well as Mr. Angus and the people from the train, which, obviously, are all there for the ghost event. To find out their next move on how to get to the new tenant, Hao Ren, they ask the terminal for help, but get disappointed as it refuses to give an answer. Instead, it tells them to investigate on their own. Nangong, who has gotten to Yorkford as well, does his work on his own. Suddenly, the cloud changes and everywhere becomes darker, then they start to hear scary sounds, and see light coming from the back of a wall. Until eventually, while hiding, they find out it was Nangong's doing while using his charms. He jumps from one side of the place to another. Now they know they have to avoid Nangong or any other person, in order to get their new tenant safely. After coming out of their hiding, they hear sounds coming from a small church nearby, which Lily suggests they go check out. But first, Hao Ren asks the terminal again if there is any signal from the new tenant, which, fortunately for them, tells them they are very close to the tenant. They walked into the church. There, they find out that someone is ahead of them, as there is a footprint on the ground. There, they find the cursed cross covered in blood that Mr. Angus talked about. Vivian uses her power to clear the blood of the cross, revealing some words written in ancient letters, but with the help of their terminal which translates the words for them, they are able to know what to do. Eventually, with the help of the words, and after following the instructions given from the word, they are able to find secret stairs which lead to an underground, and it is made known to them by the terminal that they are now close to the new tenant, who is underground. After climbing down the stairs, they walk down a dark tunnel which, with the use of the terminal, they are able to see a little, even though it sternly tells how Ren it's not a flashlight which he ignores. While walking, they find a very vast room, which Lily quickly starts to examine excitedly. But Vivian, on the other hand, feels the underground does not look like a normal underground tunnel, which Hao Ren agrees to, as he also feels the place is creepy, which makes him ask Vivian if the tales about the castle might be true. And she agrees with him that something bad really happened there but hopes everything goes well for them. Then Lily, who has checked out the room, calls to them to follow a particular part, as she perceives the smell of humans, and they run towards the place. But after running for a while, they get tired of how vast the place is. Vivian, who is anxious about the treasure that is hiding in the castle, expresses her excitement when Hao Ren says, because of how vast and big the place is, there must be something to find in it. 
Lily, who is a foodie, brings out a bone-shaped snack to eat, and surprisingly, how Ren asks for some. Vivian, who sees what they do is sightseeing, and resting after a long walk, which they reply is by telling her to sit and rest a bit, which she declines. Also, Lily, who is generous, offers to give her a snack too, but she refuses, which makes Lily jokingly say she's afraid of tooth decay due to her old age, which she canters back by telling Lily she's not young herself. This is in order not to allow this to cause another uproar between them. How Ren quickly intervenes, telling them they are both 17-year-old girls. While this goes on, suddenly, something rumbles from inside the very vast passage of the room. They had a thought it might be their new tenant who was coming for them, but in a scary way, which makes How Ren say he would triple his house rent for scaring him like that. Vivian, who doesn't know how to pay for her house rent, asks him to make sure the new tenant pays hers too, even without meeting the tenant yet. They walk down the dark passage. While doing this, Vivian noticed that if it was the tenant's voice they heard then at the church, then they should have found the tenant. Meanwhile, Nangong, while trying to look for a way to get into the underground, uses his charm to raise a big rock. And fortunately for him, he is right as there is a hole underneath the rock that leads him to the underground tunnel. While walking down the passage to catch up with their new tenant, they get to see the innkeeper, Mr. Angus, in the tunnel, with a backpack, which, from the outside, looks like there is some equipment in it. They wonder what he is doing down there, and on the other hand, Lily thinks he's also there to investigate the ghost issue, as they try as much as much as possible not to be heard by him. Vivian, who thinks Mr. Angus must have a secret about coming this far into the tunnel, and in order for them not to be seen by him, she uses her magic to create a black fog, which covers each of them and makes them appear like a ghost spirit. In order to scare him, Lily walks toward him in a scary way, which makes him scream out in fear, and think it's the spirit knight from the tales that were told about the castle. In order to scare him more, they decide that How Ren should ask him why he has come his long way into the tunnel which he did in a deeper voice. And the man replies, crying and saying he is just a mere merchant who runs an inn but his business isn't going well, which is why he fabricated the ghost event to attract tourists. Seeing that this is an offense to the dead spirits, How Ren scolds him, and he apologizes bitterly and asks for forgiveness. After How Ren promises not to hurt him, Mr. Angus asks why he has come for him and if he really is a ghost from the castle. Knowing he has to lie, he tells him he came for him because he looks suspicious and that he has come to visit a neighbor from a nearby cemetery. Vivian then informs him that the black fog will disappear in order not to be exposed. He orders Mr. Angus to get out of the castle immediately without looking back, which he did, and immediately the black fog disappears. Eventually, after all this, they get to find out the truth behind the ghost event Mr. Angus talked about on the TV show. Lily, who has left their side and goes close to a wall where some words are written in unknown letters, which Vivian identifies as the magic letters that suppress evil, zero which is now commonly used by demon hunters. To understand what is written on the wall, How Ren asks if Vivian can translate it, which she did. She says it's a place where no evil is sealed and no evil can penetrate and if the seal ever goes off, the guardians will awake. In the end, they find out, something not good must have been sealed down there. Vivian, who knows some things about the place, tells them that the Yorkford Lord can't be a normal noble after all, further stating that he must be a demon hunter integrated into human society. These words surprise Hao Ren, who doesn't know she knows a lot about the place. Just then, Vivian touched one of the letters, making light forms on the letter. Because of this, the place starts to crumble as a means of response to her magic power. Then suddenly, arrows are charged toward them, and with the help of Hao Ren's protective shield, they are not hit by the arrows. In order to be safe, they try to run away from the place with the help of Hoa Ren's magic shield. As the arrows are still charging toward them, they get to a blocked wall, which Hao Ren instructs Lily to quickly break through for them to be safe from the attack, which fortunately they are able to do. Amidst all these, Nangong is also facing his own troubles while trying to find a way out of the tunnel he jumped into, while looking for a way to get into the underground. After surviving the attack, Vivian shares her understanding of the reason why they were attacked. This happens to be the fact that the mechanism, which is the arrows, aims to kill anyone who tries to free the evil sealed there. Meanwhile, where they run to for safety is also a dangerous place, as a big stone rolls toward them with the aim of crushing anything in its path. To avoid this, they quickly stick to one side of the wall. Seeing all this, How Ren wonders how Mr. Angus was able to survive all these traps. While talking, Lily runs after the rolling stone, saying it should wait for her in order to make sure she isn't hurt, but they run after her. As they run after her, the ground opens, making her fall into a trap hole. 
Seeing that Lily has fallen into the trap, Vivian quickly flies to save her from crashing into the fall. After landing safely on the ground, Hao Ren, who has jumped into the trap, comes crashing on them, making the three of them fall flat on the ground. On the other hand, Nangong gets to the place where Hao Ren and his tenants were attacked with arrows. Seeing the arrows on the floor, he goes ahead to use his magic power on the letters, which makes him get attacked as well, with arrows charging at him. He tries as much as possible to escape but a few of the arrows eventually hit him. While Nangong struggles with him, Hao Ren and the girls stand by the fall, only for them to find the room filled with treasure of different kinds. The girls feel so excited about this, but as they try to run to the treasures, Hao Ren stops them, telling them to clear their faces, which to their surprise and luckily for them, they have been deceived by a magical hallucination which could lead them into a trap underneath the treasures they saw if they had moved closer to it. They find out they were saved because Hao Ren has reached self-actualization stage where he can see what will happen next. They follow a tiny path between the traps to the other side of the room. They walk a very long way through the creepy passage until they get to a way whereby the walls start closing on them, with the aim of flatting them. Lily and Vivian try to use their powers to stop this but find out their powers are not working. While they cry to Hao Ren to leave them behind, he uses his hand to stop the wall, which obeys him as it stops closing up and which makes the two girls get their powers back. This surprises everyone and Hao Ren advises that they leave before the walls close up again. Nangong, who successfully escaped the arrows after the hit into the room, Lily broke the wall, as he also get attacked by the old-fashioned trap of the big stone rolling toward which he survive as well. Escaping this, he walks in the direction where he knows there is likely to be a trap and while talking to himself, he falls into the trap hole like the one Lily fell in. While Nangong falls in the darkness, he eventually sees a pool of water and he finds it beautiful. Surprisingly, the only thought he has is to take a picture in order to get more followers, which would lead to him getting more sponsors. Meanwhile, Hao Ren and the others are now tired and decide to rest. Their rest is, however, interrupted by some ghosts of knights coming from the ground. These happen to be the knights who have been sealed in the castle. Since there are too many traps, making it dangerous to fight here, they decide to run instead. The ghosts catch up with them and they find themselves cornered. Fortunately, they get to safety and the ghosts are sealed on the other side. Lily was able to get a sword from one of the soldiers. She notices a writing on it which states sleepless warriors, guarding the magic stone by covenant, drive out invaders. Their attention is drawn to the word magic stone. At this moment, Vivian realizes that they got one thing wrong. The ghosts are not prisoners. Apparently, the stone is a medium of demons, serving like demon cell phones. They wonder what would happen if the demons were summoned. The ghosts happen to be guards to make sure the seal is not removed. While Lily suggests destroying the stone, Vivian states that it cannot be damaged easily. In the midst of the conversation, Hao Ren asks if they would be safe if they didn't summon demons, even if the seal is removed. Vivian, however, lets them know that the demon could still come to the world if he is an aggressive one. Hao Ren hopes the demon is a nerd. Finally, they come to the conclusion that it is best to stay away from the magic stone. Looking up, Hao Ren sees something that catches his attention and he asks Vivian if she knows what the stone looks like. When she describes it, he discovers that it is similar to the one hanging above them. Meanwhile, Nangong sees a dent in the wall which he senses powerful magic coming from. While he thinks about what to do, Hao Ren is devastated. He asks Terminal to call Raven in order to find a solution, but the latter states that it can only happen when he is about to die. At this time, Nangong casts a spell that causes the wall to explode. This happens at the exact moment when Vivian tries to calm Hao Ren down with the fact that nothing will happen as long as no external force hits the stone. The explosion causes the stone to fall off from where it has been hung. This causes a league of ghost knights to surround them. Maki Thinji them realize that it could be a while before they can go back home. If you like this recap, do let me know in the comments, and obviously leave your like too. Do not forget to share with your friends and subscribe. Above all, activate your notification bell so you don't miss the next episode when it drops. Until next time, do take care and stay safe.